hello dear brothers and sisters I pray everyone is doing well I know we are all weary and if you are feeling that way I pray that you would seek the Father ask him to strengthen you because he will it is prophesied in scripture that we would um, be feeling this way that the enemy would have the power to overcome the saints not overcome but to wear us out um, we will not be overcome if we stand strong in faith <clears throat> so um, please seek him if you need that strength because we all reach the point where we're tired and our brothers and sisters who are watchmen which I consider myself one yes we do get weary and I it, it saddens my heart to see fellow watchmen being um, beaten up however that means they're doing something right <clears throat> And for those who truly do believe that they are in Christ, then you need to repent of this beating up of watchmen. <clears throat> Myself, I don't think that most of the ones who are doing that are truly in Christ. They are wolves in sheep's clothing, minions set out to divide and conquer because that's what the enemy has sent them to do uh, with that being said I want to put out a disclaimer for what I'm about to share um, there are numbers involved because whether anyone likes to believe it or not our Heavenly Father his Ruach HaKodesh does show his servants numbers and how do we know whether or not the father is purposely showing things that not that they won't come to pass but they won't come to pass necessarily when we think so to test us to see if we will be obedient <clears throat> whether or not we will um, do what a watchman has been called to do which is sound the alarm and just because a watchman sounds the alarm and there happen to be numbers that could be dates and those dates that are perceived come and go does not mean that they're false it does not mean that they're making stuff up it does not mean that they're trying to gain a following of their own it just means that maybe we don't have the full understanding yet and who are we to say whether or not our king wants his bride to stay ready he knows us and he knows that if he doesn't keep us ready and on our toes and constantly watching for things including dates that may come and go that we will fall back asleep and probably slip back into the world and he doesn't want that to happen so for anyone who is mocking and scoffing a fellow servant for putting out information and saying to watch this date and most of my brothers and sisters I have not heard set any dates for the rapture yes there are some but who are we to judge and as brother Todd stated um, ye without sin cast the first stone so um, you know if you don't like if someone is setting a particular date for a rapture then don't watch their channel um, it's as easy as that because for those who are strong in the faith it's not gonna phase them yes we might become discouraged but it won't phase our faith and we'll keep watching and if anyone is in still a babe in Christ still on the milk or don't know the Lord at all then we as the body need to pray for them that when they come across 
videos or websites or information from wherever and it tends to uh, perhaps heighten their excitement about things to come that they not see or hear anything that would cause them to be discouraged we should be praying for them so with that being said I want to say that I am NOT setting any dates for the rapture or for any particular event to happen whatsoever I have been shown things like other brothers and sisters who are on the wall and thus being obedient to our king I am presenting them to you please pray for discernment um, because we all get a, a small piece of the puzzle and we're supposed to take that piece and put it in place with other brothers and sisters who are also getting pieces of the puzzle and then one of these days the puzzle will be complete and Abba willing we'll be out of here so um, and I did pray for confirmation about whether or not I should share um, and I did get it like immediately so uh, with that being said I want to share with you some some things that are up and coming and I pray that it will encourage us and if uh, a particular day comes and goes and nothing happens how do we know whether or not that information was specifically given to make sure we're in place I think these are like breadcrumbs that are put out and we're supposed to pick one up and keep walking until we get to the next one <clears throat> uh, like I said if, if these breadcrumbs were not being laid down then people would wander around in the forest and get lost and not be on the ready and as Yeshua said in the garden when he was praying canst thou not stay awake for one hour with me and pray pray therefore lest you fall into temptation and stay awake and watch is specifically what he said so these breadcrumbs that our brothers and sisters or our watchmen are putting out there it, we're not date setting their breadcrumbs just look at it that way and always pray for discernment because sometimes we might you know in our flesh put something out there that's um, that we don't have the full understanding of because we're human so keep that in mind don't judge a brother or sister take everything put it in your toolbox and don't hold all your don't put all your eggs in one basket and put all your hopes into that one basket and then be let down if a date comes and goes because that's looking at the whole picture completely wrong in my humble opinion so I'm not going to keep going on and on let's get into what I want to show you okay so you might be if you don't already know wondering what is Tub Bishavat a Shabbat um, in, in case you don't know, for those of you who don't know much about the Hebrew language, the V is pronounced as a B, so if you hear me say Shabbat, um, that's why. Uh, so Tub B'Shabbat is the 15th day of the month of Shabbat, and it is a traditional date that marks the beginning of a new year for trees and though it occurs in January February on a Gregorian calendar Tubu Shabbat is associated with the start of spring in Israel since the earliest blooming trees begin a new fruit bearing cycle in the modern state of Israel uh, Tubu Shabbat is observed as sort of National Arbor Day so you might be asking, well, why is this important? Well, um, in Matthew twenty four twenty, Yeshua says, "Pray that your flight or your escape be not in the winter, 
or on the Sabbath day. And I had read that verse plenty of times, and every time, you know, all the fall festivals and then Hanukkah would go by, I would be like, oh, now i got to wait. You know, if, if we're going by the patterns that are shown in regards to the snatching away, then I would always think, oh, now we have to wait till spring for a possible rapture departure. And as we've been taught, the spring that most people know is at the spring equinox on March 21st or thereabouts. Well, um, I just recently found this out, and, and I had come across the New Year for Trees um, on Hebrew for Christians, uh, looking up all the different holidays and feast days, and I was like, oh, well, that one's not really that important. You know, I'm not going to uh, spend too much time researching that. And then it finally dawned on me that, wait a minute, <laughs> um... It is very significant because we are referred to by Yeshua, Jesus, as being fruit trees. Because he says you will know them by their fruit. Um, the fruits of the Spirit. So I was like, oh, it, you know, light bulb went off. So then I realized I needed to start uh, looking at this a little closer. So, um, it just so happens that the 15th of Shabbat is on January 31st, which is, you know, about, what, 27, 26 days from now. So, um... I wanted to get this video out so that, you know, once again, something to look ahead to. Not saying anything's going to happen, um, but it, there's some, some other things, and this is going to be another series of videos because I can't do it all in one. It, it When he shows me stuff, it's everything is connected <gasps> like a daisy chain, and so it's it can't be done in one short video. Um, this video that I'm going to be doing on the the to Bishavat is linked to the Song of Solomons which is linked to the bride being raptured which is linked to the 144,000 so we're gonna to have to go step by step um, also on January 31st it will be the second full moon of the month which is commonly referred to as a blue moon. Whenever there are two full moons in one month, it's called a blue moon. I guess the second one is. And not only is it a blue moon, but it's a super moon, and there will be a total lunar eclipse all in one night. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. This has a blue supermoon lunar eclipse coming for the first time in 150 years. And, um, they are actually referring to it as a super blue blood moon. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's a, a pr pretty rare event. Um, and it just so happens that it falls on um, January 31st, which is the first day of the month of Shabbat, which is the new year of trees. Um, that new year of trees has to do with first fruits, and I'm going to get into that. And I do apologize. I know I sound really tired. It's because I am. Um... I meant to say Song of Songs, uh, you know, which is otherwise known as the Song of Solomon. Instead, I 
mixed the two of them together and said Song of Solomon. But anyway, so I'm going to um, break for now and I'll come back and uh, finish this up uh, at a later time. So I'll be back. Okay, guys, um, I thought about it, and I'm just going to push on through for a little while longer. I'm trying to get as much of this done, so bear with me. Um, I know I sound tired, but just bear with me. Okay, uh, I wanted to cover um, the origin of the term blue moon, um, the folk, folk etymology, the word blue doesn't really mean the color blue. It apparently comes from an old English word uh, uh, called bilu, which means to betray. And when you go look it up in Wikipedia or wherever, they have, you know, their own uh, definitions of what that means. I don't buy their definition, to be honest with you. Um, and the first thing that came to mind when I saw that that word means to betray and knowing that it's a full moon, I immediately thought of Passover because Passover, um, the, the, the crucifixion, it was a full moon the night that uh, the night of Passover Um, and the night that Yeshua was put in the tomb after he came off the cross. And, of course, we know that he was betrayed. Um, and since I told you already that this eventually ties into the 144,000, and it was interesting that in Mark chapter 14, verse 44, where there's 144 in that verse, that's where it talks about the betrayal of Yeshua. Okay, so just to recap, um, Tub Shabbat is January 31st, which is the 15th day of Shabbat, so it's halfway through the month. It is the beginning of spring in Israel. It is the new year of trees, primarily fruit trees. We are known as trees. Um, and Yeshua is the tree of life, and we are part of his body. Um, some would even say that perhaps the tree of life is an almond tree because of the associations of the almond tree to the menorah and um, Aaron's staff was an almond branch that budded overnight. But we don't know. <laughs> That's just an assumption. Um... And uh, on the 31st, same day as the New Year of Trees, is the blue blood <laughs> supermoon. So it will be a full moon. It will be a blood moon, so there, it's you know supposed to be red. Um, the blue is not blue in color. It comes from the word bilu, which means to betray. So it used to be called a betrayer's moon. Um, from the word Bilu, and it's just interesting that the night before Yeshua was 
to be crucified, he was betrayed. Um, which was the night before the blue, uh, I'm sorry, the full moon. So, um, just wanted to make you all aware of that. I'm not saying that the rapture is going to happen or that anything else is going to happen. It's just another marker in time, a breadcrumb that our king wants his bride to be aware of. He's, he's, um... guiding her to where he is. Um, it's like, as the shepherd, it's like his voice calling to his sheep um, to come near to him. He's gathering his sheep together. So, um, that's primarily what this video is all about. I believe I covered everything having to do with Tube Shabbat. If I find something that I may have missed, I'll put it in the next video um, because we're going to get into Song of Songs, um, a.k.a. Song of Solomon, because it all ties in. The Tub Shabbat and the Fruit Trees goes directly into that book, and then that ties into the 144,000. So stick around. And I pray that you're blessed by this. Seek him for confirmation um, or for discernment if, uh, if you're not quite understanding what I'm portraying here. So with that being said, I pray that you all are blessed. And I'll see you in the next video. Shalom.